Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the City Council, including the Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. It is now 1 o'clock on December 15th, 2020, and I'll call this meeting to order and begin with uh, Council uh, Ted Weil, who will lead us in the flag salute. Thank you, Mayor. Please join me in putting your hand over your heart and salute our great country. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, would the city clerk take roll, please? Councilmember Mulatto? Here. Councilmember Marker? Here. Councilmember Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Downs? I'm here. Mayor Kite? Here. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to non-agenda public comments, and I'll turn the mic over to the city clerk to handle the pers perspective comments. Thank you. So now is the time, if anyone has comments um, on items that are not listed on the agenda, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom to indicate that you wish to speak. And we have one speaker card, Wally Melendez. Uh, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I'm Wally Melendez. Uh, uh, good afternoon to the uh, City Council, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Rancho Mirage administration. Congratulations to the two new um, uh, City uh, uh, Council members, uh, Lynn uh, uh, Mulatto and uh, Meg um, uh, uh, Marker. <clears throat> Congratulations. <clears throat> so continuing my, uh, my subject here, concerning, um, concerning a FCEVs, FCEVs, fuel cell electric vehicles. They're in competition to regular electric vehicles, which will only give you about 200 miles. A, an FCEB, uh, FCEB will give you up to 400 miles, okay, when you charge it. <clears throat> so it's a big difference. You can go to Los Angeles and back and forth. Uh, your, the, the, the main, uh, your, uh, your main enemies here is the oil industry and the automobile industry. The automobile industry is making Gas, gasoline cars, ga gasoline burning cars, they're also making electric vehicles, a lot of them. <clears throat> they're making very few, very few FCEVs. Uh, three companies make FCEVs that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, Toyota makes the uh, Mir um, <clears throat> Mirai, the Mirai. Uh, Chandai, H-Y, Korea uh, makes the <clears throat> next Nexo, uh, 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 and I'm not sure that I've heard that uh, Honda makes uh, FCEVs, and I don't know what they call them. Uh, uh, so uh, the, 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 that's the ones um, that I've heard of. I've been I've been looking into this for for a while. And I went looking for, for a charger, for a hydrogen charger. I found one in uh, Santa Barbara, but they're out here in, uh, by uh, Riverside and uh, uh, Orange, uh, out that way. But when it gets here, when it gets better out here, I like Santa Barbara instead of down here. Okay, so, uh, so, 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 so that's what you gotta think about. <clears throat> um, 
And this is charging station still there by La Cumbre and Highway 101. And I just got five seconds. So, yes, put it on the agenda. Either the mayor or three of the council people can put it on the agenda so we'll have more time. There's a lot of room out here, so, there's a, so you can put it anywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wally. That was the only speaker card. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak but did not submit a speaker card? Seeing no one. And we do have one speaker on Zoom. Uh, last four digits of the phone number are 2615. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Brad Anderson. I currently live in the city of Rasmus, and I just wanted to speak on a few items today. Uh, uh, I did submit some written statements, so hopefully that's uh, placed in the record and people can look at those uh, to briefly go over some of the items I wanted to speak about today. So I don't have to repeat myself now. Uh, I just wanted to illustrate or I guess raise my concerns. Uh, I just actually went to uh, administrative hearing, or more like a kangaroo court, uh, to the city. And this is the second time I've had to do this under frost pretenses from the city codes compliance. And, and my issue this time is really with the legal department, and that's in my uh, written statements too. Uh, they're going unabated, and I was unavailable or unable to receive any of the documents that are legally I should have been able to retain. And the city manager was not helpful, or the code compliance officer manager, meaning they wouldn't even return my phone cards. So this is a big issue, and I'm sure what's happening to me is happening to most everybody on this revenue stream that the city appears to have. Uh, so actually, I would just applaud, uh, you know, just hopefully you can look into this matter i will be due uh, this, this will be going away for a long time so i will be hopping on this for a long time so that's all i have hey thank you very much bye-bye thank you brad that was the last speaker okay thank you we'll now move on to council comments and uh, i'd like to begin with uh, council member uh, marker uh, do you have a comment Okay, thank you. And Mayor Pro Tem Downs, do you have a comment? I do, thank you, Mr. Mayor. What I wanted to do today is to do an update on Visit Greater Palm Springs. So uh, in uh, November, we had um, our regular Joint Powers Authority uh, Executive Committee meeting along with the Board of Directors meeting. And uh, I wanted to give you a, a brief update on some of the things that were discussed. Uh, first uh, is this uh, resident sentiment study uh, and uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the Board of Visit Greater Palm Springs is, in, is conducting a sentiment study to determine um, opinions of the, uh, uh, of the people of this desert about uh, Visit Greater Palm Springs. And the, the study is conducted by an organization called Destination Analysts. I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. One is uh, the opinion of the majority of people in this desert about uh, tourism and its effect on the economy. And 98% of the respondents to this study indicated that they were well aware of how important tourism is to, is to the economy here for all of our cities in the desert. I found something kind of interesting. So look at the quality of life. It says that tourism improves your daily life. 74% of the people think that tourism improves our daily life. I guess that means that there are 24 people who know that the economy is served well by uh, tourism, but um, don't like all the people coming here all the time. So, so I, I just find, found that kind of interesting. In any event, I'll talk a little bit more about, um, about the impact of tourism on uh, our city in a few minutes. But I also wanted to share with you uh, some of the uh, marketing and communications efforts that uh, VGPS is, uh, uh, is um, um, using to direct tra tourism to this desert. So there are three what will you find um, spots that have been running in key cities uh, around the country and in Canada in September and October to drive tourism to our desert. The first is a spot, uh, the first what will you find spot is on culinary. So let's go ahead and play this, Josh. What will you find? Visit Greater Palm Springs. Find your oasis. And the next spot is uh, on outdoor experiences, so let's go ahead and run that.
What will you find? Visit Greater Palm Springs. And the last What Will You Find spot is on events that uh, take place here in our desert. Visit Greater Palm Springs. So I think running these spots helps all of us uh, reflect a little bit on uh, what a great place we have to live here in the desert. Uh, and these are spots that uh, were run in September and October in some key cities. Let's take a look at the next slide that shows us uh, where the, uh, these spots were run on social media. So uh, these were, let's go on to the next slide if we can. So nonstop air cities that are, uh, uh, that are, are served, that serve Palm Springs. Uh, so there were several in Canada and most of them in the U.S. Anyway, this shows you uh, where these uh, cities are located, where these spots ran. These are key places that, that uh, result in tourism traffic to, uh, to our desert. And the next um, map shows you a little more graphically where all the cities are located, as well as the dozen airlines that serve uh, Palm Springs on a nonstop basis. Um, so the, the important thing here that I think uh, we all want to also reflect on is... Uh, Tourism is remarkably important, not to the desert as a whole, uh, to the desert as a whole, but certainly specifically to, to Rancho Mirage. So our annual operating budget in this city is about $30 million, and about 30% of that comes from transit occupancy tax from uh, our hotels, uh, and the primary source of uh, that TOT revenue are our large uh, resort hotels, the Ritz, the Westin, and the Omni. Um, so important for us to uh, work together with them um, and important for all of us to be aware and to, to, to know how important tourism is for our city. Uh, the last slide, uh, actually one of the last slides, is uh, uh, Visit Greater Palm Springs is uh, going through diversity, equity, uh, in, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness training. Uh, our, our desert uh, is a center for, um, for inclusiveness, and it's important that... Uh, Visit Greater Palm Springs, all of the staff and all of the uh, hotels and tourism industry uh, is well aware of how important inclusiveness is to our desert. Uh, and so they're going through a, uh, a training uh, that's uh, put together by Travel Unity to make sure that uh, everybody, is, everybody in Greater Palm Springs and at our uh, tourism destinations are well aware of how important it is to be inclusive to our population in this city, the, uh, in, in this desert. And the last slide... Uh, is one that shows you some award winners from the Champions of Hospitality Gala uh, that Visit Greater Palm Springs uh, held on November 30th. This shows you some of the uh, winners from the city of Rancho Mirage. Uh, all of our hotels, all of our major resort hotels were represented, uh, the Westin, the uh, Ritz, and the Omni, as well as one of our commercial stores, Rancho Relaxo. And the key award of the evening went to our Westin Mission Hills Resort Hotel and the general manager, Tom Scaramolino. Um, so that's just a quick update on uh, the uh, last Joint Powers Authority and Board of Directors meeting and uh, just a couple of, um, of comments about how important tourism is, not just to the desert, but to the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Steve. I was really impressed by the number of awards that local facilities received at that evening. Uh, I think uh, the total number of whether it be hotels or restaurants, whatever area we're addressing, certainly has increased recently. And I think we're getting really a lot more uh, buck for, uh, bang for our buck uh, with the monies that are being sent. We are, thank you, Richard. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, moving on to council comments, uh, council member Mulatto. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick thank you to all the residents of Rancho Mirage for the, the vote and the confidence to join the city council. But I'd also like to thank, <clears throat> excuse me, my fellow council members and the staff for the warm welcome to City Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And moving on now to Council Member Weil. Would you have any comments, Ted? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this being our last meeting uh, of the year, 
Uh, I just want to wish everyone a, uh, a healthy and happy new year, uh, one filled with a great deal of uh, health, prosperity, and happiness. Uh, we've come through a challenging period. Uh, last year, of course, with the last two years with COVID, uh, it was extremely challenging. And I'm very proud of the way the city has responded uh, from a financial standpoint uh, to think that uh, we had uh, two years ago uh, had a uh, financial reserve of 70 million. It went down to 60 and a little under 60 million in the two years. And it has now been built, built back up to 70 million. In spite of the fact that we spent 10 plus million on the Great Plates program and other incentives to keep our restaurants uh, alive and to keep our most vulnerable residents fed. So we can be very proud of, of what was accomplished. In addition, last year, uh, we had some amazing groundbreaking uh, opportunities. Uh, one that we greatly look forward to in the coming year. Catino will be a transformative project in the coming year. Uh, it, it will be uh, transformative not only for our city, uh, but for the entire valley. Uh, it's very exciting to look forward to that. The uh, Sensai uh, Resort opened in November. This international spa will only gain further reputation with his class and dignity. We have, again, uh, a number of exciting things, one of which is on our consent calendar that will be reviewed later today regarding the Jessup dealerships uh, in Rancho Mirage. And we continue to grow and I think we continue to grow in a manner consistent with the lifestyle of our residents. It's done with, again, uh, their lifestyle and way of life always in our focus. So again, I wish everyone a, an abundance of good health in the coming year. And I look forward to sharing these exciting uh, moments with you. And I, too, would like to once again congratulate uh, our new council members, uh, Meg Marker and Lynn Mulatto, uh, Steve Downs, although he was elected, he's an old hand now, having been on the council eight months or so. So I think that the transition uh, will be seamless and uh, we will have a very harmonious council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate your comments. Now, what I'd like to do now is to move on to city manager comments. Isaiah, do you have any comments to be made today? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge and thank our city staff uh, for the great work that they do for this community. Um, they keep things going, and uh, they really do care for their community and doing their jobs well. <clears throat> And you see that passion when you interact with them. And so I just want to acknowledge them and thank them for their uh, work and service to uh, our city. And then I also wanted to uh, thank our uh, public safety professionals, so our law enforcement officers and our uh, fire and uh, medic personnel uh, who don't get holidays. Uh, they service our community around the clock uh, every single day of the week. And so that means sometimes sacrificing some holidays with their family so that they can uh, protect all of us. So uh, thank you to all of our first responders out there who do a great job taking care of our community, especially during the holidays. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Isaiah. I will now move on to consent calendar. And uh, this goes back to the city manager. Isaiah? Oh, Isaiah. I got it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before I start with the consent calendar, I would like to pull item number five uh, for separate consideration. Uh, Mr. And Mayor, I would also like to pull item number two for separate consideration. 
Okay, so we will pull item two and five, um, and I will summarize now the balance of the consent calendar. Uh, item number one is to waive full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two has been pulled. Item number three is uh, to adopt joint resolution number 2022 next in order, making findings pursuant to government code section 54953 as amended by assembly bill 361 and authorizing continued remote teleconference meetings of the city council and affiliated agencies and all other city affiliated Brown Act bodies in accordance with AB 361 during the current state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Item number four is to approve the general plan annual progress report 2021 and a filing of a notice of exemption pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15306 uh, for information collection and B receive and file the 2021 general plan annual progress report. Item number five has been pulled. Item number six is to adopt resolution number 2022 SA next in order approving and adopting a recognized obligation payment schedule and administrative budget for fiscal year 2023-2024 pursuant to assembly bills 26X1 and 1484. Item number seven is to approve and uh, receive and file the annual comprehensive financial report for the year ended June 30th, 2022 and other related audit reports. That information is also publicly available on the city's website. Uh, item number eight are to approve special assistance of funds awards. And item number nine are demands. So again, items two and five will be considered separately. Before we go to the council uh, questions or comments, Christy, will you please do public comment uh, on the consent calendar excluding items two and five? Certainly. So now is the time for the public to comment on uh, the consent calendar items one, three, four, six, seven, eight, or nine. If you are participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards for the consent calendar. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on one of these items but did not submit a speaker card? Seeing no one, and there is no one on Zoom either. No speakers. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to this more on this item for council comments. Any uh, questions, comments down here? I do, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So uh, I've just got a question and a comment uh, about item number four, the general plan annual progress report, uh, specifically uh, page 4.5, which is land use policy LU 2.3. Uh, and uh, the status is the city is currently in the progress of performing a comprehensive update to the uh, Highway 111 specific plan. Seems to me that it was uh, roughly maybe about seven or eight months ago that we did have um, a, um, an update report from planning about progress on the 111 specific plan. My only question uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, or to the city manager is, uh, could we do an agenda item sometime uh, in the next couple of months just to do another update to make sure we're all, uh, especially with our new council members uh, aboard, to make sure that we're all well aware as to the content uh, of that plan. Absolutely. And then the uh, last item that I wanted to uh, mention, Ted mentioned this in his comments. By the way, uh, Ted, uh, you mentioned I've been around for about eight months now. Tomorrow, December 16th, marks one year. It was December 16th of 2021. That, uh, uh, that this council was kind enough to appoint me. Uh, How to, fast uh, the time goes. It does, doesn't it? Happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary tomorrow. Thank you, Richard. Anyway, so uh, the, uh, the, the comment that I wanted to make, uh, and Ted mentioned it as well, is on page 414 under economic and fiscal, uh, the economic and fiscal portion of the general plan. Uh, the status is the city implemented a grant program in 2021 in response to COVID-19, and Ted has already mentioned that. And I think it's very important to underscore the financial responsibility that all of us on this council take remarkably seriously towards this city. Uh, and it certainly is the case that uh, because we are able to carry a significant reserve, we're able to spend the roughly $10 million that Ted mentioned 
to, um, uh, to provide for the financial health of uh, our food service businesses uh, and uh, uh, services to our community during uh, COVID-19. And as Ted also mentioned, uh, that, it, that entire $10 million has already been uh, recouped and uh, our reserves are back up to about 70 million. So those are, are the two comments that I wanted to make about the uh, general plan annual review. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, City Manager, do we want to vote on those issues first and then come back to the questions? Yeah, so if you go ahead and uh, if we're done with council questions or comments, uh, we can call for a motion on items one, three, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'll go ahead and make that motion to approve the consent calendar with the exception of item two, and I'm sorry, what was the, the other item was number five, two and five. So a uh, motion to approve consent calendar with the exception of items two and five. Can I have a second, please? I'll second that. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move back to the previous items which were held out. So, so we'll take these one at a time, Mr. Mayor. So um, uh, we will go back to item two. Uh, and so we can turn this over to uh, Council Member Weil since he is the one that pulled it. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the minutes um, do not reflect my comments um, from the last meeting uh, where I uh, acknowledged uh, the contribution of council members Smotrich and Townsend, but I also talked about the contribution uh, of uh, Dana Hobart and what he has meant to the city and the specific contributions he has made. And I enumerated both the undergrounding of utilities as well as the architect of the observatory. So I would like the minutes to reflect my comments uh, that were included uh, at that meeting, but excluded from the minutes that are contained herein. Thank you. Okay, we'll look into that. And uh, Mr. City Manager, the next item. So what we can go ahead and do is uh, we can take public comment on the minutes. Okay, so now's the time for anyone who would like to comment on item number two. If you were participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. I have no speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one and no one on Zoom either. So now, uh, Mr. Mayor, we can uh, entertain a motion with the set amendments uh, to the minutes. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Pardon me. Uh, thank you for that. Um, now we will move on to item number five. And before we start, I'll turn this over to our city attorney. Okay. Um, Councilmember Marker has an announcement to make. Yes. Hi. Thank you. My company, Marker Broadcasting, has done business for many, many years with Dan Jessup and his family. Therefore, I will have to abstain from this vote. And since the item is on the consent calendar, she's not required to remove herself from the council chambers. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. All right. And so uh, going back to item number five, uh, this is uh, approval of the final track map number 38054 for the Volvo and Infinity dealerships in Rancho Mirage. Uh, before we go to council comments or questions, if any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, uh, you would use the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Uh, Christy, will you please handle the public comments? I do not have any speaker cards on this. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on item five? Seeing no one and no one on Zoom. Mr. City Manager, do we go to a vote on this now? Yeah, so uh, we can vote, or if there's any questions from the council members, we'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Any further questions? I have no questions. Ed? Uh, none. Okay. Can I have a motion, please? Motion to approve item number five on the consent calendar. And I will second that motion. Please vote.
Motion carries 3-1 with Mayor Kite opposed and Council Member Marker recused. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Can I uh, re-vote? Yes, I'll have to cancel all of them and we'll have everyone vote one more time. One moment. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, go ahead and put your votes in. Okay, so motion carries for zero with council member Marker recused. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate the uh, Chessup family. I think it's going to be a wonderful addition to uh, the city. Uh, it'll be, uh, it'll look just terrific uh, on our 111 corridor. Thank you. Second those comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the next item, which is a public hearing. And this is to consider uh, environmental assessment case number EA22-004 and the tentative parcel map case number TPM22-001. And I'm going to turn that over to our planner, uh, Pivar uh, Lopez. Lopez, I'm sorry. Pilar Lopez, our associate planner. Pilar? Thank you, Mayor Kite, and good afternoon, members of the City Council. I have for your consideration tentative parcel map case number TPM 22-0001, TPM 38152, and environmental assessment case number EA 22-0004, a request from Fria Spushnak to subdivide an existing 3.24-acre parcel. The 3.24 acres parcel is located off Clancy Lane. On October 6, 1988, the City Council approved tentative parcel map 23752, which subdivided 6.1 acres into two three-acre parcels. A condition of approval required the documents be recorded to ensure that no further subdivisions would occur on the two parcels. A covenant against subdivision was executed and recorded in 1989. This covenant currently prevents the subject parcel from being subdivided. The reason for the restriction was not stated in the staff report or meeting minutes, but research leads staff to believe that there were concerns raised regarding the maintenance of the driveway to the southern lot and the recordation of CCNRs for the new parcel separate from the Clancy Lane Master Homeowners Association. Conditions of approval number 51 and 53 for the subject request require CCNRs to be recorded for the proposed subdivision. Since the City Council approved the covenant against subdivision in 1989, the City Council will be the final approving body for the proposed tentative parcel map project and the release and termination of the covenant against subdivision. The irregular shape parcel is defined by the 30 foot wide linear strip that extends to Clancy Lane to provide access to the project site. Access to the parcels will be provided by the private driveway parcel A off Clancy Lane. The existing 20-foot driveway within Lot A will be increased in width to 24 feet by removing curbing and landscaping. Condition of approval number 22 requires a hammerhead turnaround acceptable to the fire department to be constructed within parcel 2 inside an emergency access easement to be shown on the final map. The new 24-foot wide driveway will allow for emergency vehicles to access the subject site. The private driveway will measure approximately 600 feet in length. The proposed project would result in two parcels that are consistent with the surrounding neighborhood. Parcel one and parcel two are both over one acre in size. Each residential lot meets or exceeds the minimum development standards for the residential estate, RE zoning district. Developed properties surrounding the site consist of single-family homes in the Clancy Lane community, which have a mix of RE and very low-density residential, RL2, zoning designations, and to the east condominiums within the Rancho Las Palmas Country Club, which have the RL2 zoning designation. The project site has approximately 30 linear feet frontage off Clancy Lane, including the 24-foot private driveway. Per the municipal code, trees must be planted at a rate of at least one tree for every 30 linear feet of street frontage. Since the subject site's narrow street frontage does not su provide sufficient area for trees, no trees are required along Clancy Lane. 
24 existing palm trees line the interior private driveway. In between the palm trees, the landscape will be enriched by additional graphite gray decomposed granite and desert appropriate shrubs. The retention basin will include various shrubs and four 24 inch box citrus trees, as well as decorative gray island beach landscape rocks. An existing vehicle gate is located approximately 152 feet south from Clancy Lane. No changes are proposed to the size and height of the existing vehicle gate. Pursuant to ordinance number 1170, condition of approval number nine has been added to ensure the installation of a Knox entry system consistent with any emergency access policies for use by the sheriffs and fire departments. The project was presented to the Planning Commission on November 22nd, 2022. The Planning Commission recommended approval to the City Council and the motion was carried 3-0. Staff has received one written comment and that has been made available to the Council prior to the meeting. The Planning Commission recommended that the City Council approve one, consideration of the release and termination of the covenant against subdivision recorded in 1989 Two, consider the filing of a notice of exemption pursuant to California Environmental Quality Act Section 15315 Minor Land Divisions. And three, consideration of tentative parcel map case number TPM 22-0001, TPM 38152, for the subdivision of a 3.4 acre parcel into two residential parcels in a private driveway, subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content and findings in the staff report. This concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Excellent report. Sorry about mashing your name on the way there, but it was a great report. Uh, do we go back to city clerk now? Yes, I can handle public comments. Okay. Uh, if any, if the, now is the time for any comments on this item, um, those participating remotely can press star nine on their phone or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one, and let me get back to the right screen on here. Okay, we'll move back to uh, Kat. One moment, let me just oh. check. No, there's no one on Zoom either, thank you. Okay, thank you. Move back now to council comments. Anybody have a comment on this before we vote? Ted? Yes, Mayor. Um, Pilar, um, the uh, the original covenant uh, was put on this property by uh, uh, Mr. Heckman in 1989, uh, and of course he is deceased now. Uh, did you receive anything uh, from his estate or the trust uh, in regard to this item? We did not. Um, the new property owner purchased the property in 2019, and since then they've been very uh, motivated to uh, build on the site. So um, they're excited to, to get this project going. So to, you, to, to your knowledge, there is, there is no objection of any kind? And, no, we've not received any written comments from them. And uh, public hearing notices went out. So they received a public hearing notice as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further comments? The only comment I have is it's a little bit of an unusually shaped lot, but uh, <laughs> yes, they're, 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 I'm sure that they'll, be, um, that they'll build uh, uh, lovely residences. Well designed. Uh, any other comments? Uh, could I have a motion, please? All right, I'll be happy to make the motion <clears throat> uh, that the City Council approve the release and termination of the covenant against subdivision recorded in 1989 and two, the filing of a notice of exemption pursuant to CEQA section 15315, minor land divisions, and three, tentative parcel map number TPM 22-001, TPM 38152, for the subdivision of a 3.24 acre parcel into two residential parcels and a private seat, street, lot A, subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content and findings in the staff report. Second. Let's vote, please. 
Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the action calendar and to consider ordinances amending the charter and municipal uh, code regarding measure C approved by the voters at the November 8th 2022 general election and uh, will I turn this over to the city clerk for direction thank you mayor uh, in June of 2021 the Rancho Mirage City Council voted to consolidate Rancho Mirage general municipal elections with statewide general elections held in November of even numbered years the November 8th, 2022 Rancho Mirage General Municipal Election included two ballot measures initiated by the City Council for the purpose of aligning the rotation of Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem with November elections. Measure C revised the timing of the rotation to occur at the second regular City Council meeting in November in non-election years and at the City Council meeting when new Council members are installed in election years. Measure E revised the timing to occur at the first regular City Council meeting in December or as soon thereafter in the event of delayed certification of election. The Riverside County Registrar of Voters canvassed the ballots and certified election results as follows. Measure C received 5,342 yes votes. Measure E received 4,969 yes votes. Therefore, Measure C was approved in lieu of Measure E as Measure C received a greater number of votes in favor by the electorate than Measure E. In order to implement Measure C, the City Council must authorize the execution of an ordinance of the people of the City of Rancho Mirage amending the City Charter as set forth by voter-approved Measure C. This is Ordinance A in the staff report, which requires only one reading and becomes effective immediately upon adoption. In addition, Measure C, per Measure C, the City Council must adopt an ordinance of the City Council establishing the guidelines for appointing members to serve as Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem for one year that affords each member an equal opportunity to serve. This is Ordinance B in the staff report. It requires two readings and is effective 30 days from adoption. That completes my report and I'm available to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Do uh, we go to the public for comments? Yes, I'll go ahead and handle public comments. So if um, you're participating remotely, please press star nine or raise hand on Zoom. I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this that did not present a speaker card? Seeing no one and no one online. Okay, we'll go to the council comments. Any comments from the council? Okay, not seeing any uh, any comments. Uh, can I call for the motion, please? I'll make the motion that the uh, city council approve or authorize the city clerk to execute ordinance number next in line and ordinance of the people of the city of Rancho Mirage, California, amending the city of Rancho Mirage charter to revise the timing of the annual appointment of the mayor and mayor pro tem as set forth in measure C, approved by the voters at the November 8th, 2022 general municipal election and B, approve introduction of ordinance number next in line, next in order rather, first reading amending section 2-02-005 line of succession, appointment of mayor and mayor pro tem of the Ranch Mirage Municipal Code pursuant to measure C approved by the voters at the November 8th, 2022 general municipal election. It's lucky you didn't mess that up or we wouldn't be here next week. Huh? Uh, Charlie read one that was even longer and I, I suggested that maybe he missed his calling as a uh, radio announcer. <laughs> gotcha. I'll second it. Okay, uh, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, before we uh, move on to item number 12, I'll uh, turn this over to our city attorney. You know, oftentimes when we have a very highly successful business person join the city council, they are likely to run into some potential conflicts of interest. And even though they have a legally um, um, oblig a legal obligation to disclose with these, these, these potential conflicts of interest and to abstain or recuse themselves from voting on the matters, it's also an honorable gesture for them to disclose this information publicly because I believe that it um, shows a genuine commitment to transparency 
and a commitment to um, loyalty to the city and its taxpayers. So I don't want anybody to think that just because somebody has a potential conflict of interest up here that it's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing that they disclose and they meet their obligations under the law. So with that said, Council Member Marker has an announcement to make. Yes, thank you. Uh, my company, Marker Broadcasting, has done business with the tribe for many, many years. Therefore, I will have to recuse myself from the um, upcoming discussion and vote. And since this is an action item, the law requires that Council Member Marker just leave the um, council chambers temporarily until the um, vote is taken on the matter. Okay, do we have anything further on this item? Okay, let's move on to the final item of the agenda today, which is the considered Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians tribal sales tax agreements regarding sale and purchase of meals, food, and beverages. So at this time, I'd like to turn the uh, meeting over to the city manager who will discuss this item in more detail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I'll present the staff report for this one. Uh, so what's happening here is uh, because uh, the, the tribe is a sovereign government, um, any time that um, that government is uh, potentially doing something that might impact the city, um, we sit down and have a government-to-government -government conversation with them. And so what is prompting this is there was a recent change in state law. And uh, what this recent change in state law allows sovereign tribal governments to do is uh, for food and beverage uh, sales only, on reservation land, um, since that is consumed within the reservation, um, you know, those taxes should stay uh, local. And so the change in state law now allows a sovereign tribal government to replace the state sales tax, if they desire to do so, with a tribal sales tax on these food and beverage sales on tribal lands. Uh, so even though uh, these entities might not be uh, tribal entities, um, it still applies to them because of the nature of the service and that those goods are consumed on the reservation itself. And so uh, what the tribe is doing here is for food and beverage sales that happen within reservation land, uh, they're going to be placing, uh, replacing the state sales tax with their own tribal sales tax. And so obviously uh, sales tax is an important component of our city's funding and uh, you know, the tribe voluntarily reached out uh, to the three cities within uh, their jurisdiction and offered to enter into a government-to-government -government MOU with us to make sure that we still received, we, the city, still received our portion of the sales tax. Uh, and I'd really like to take a moment to thank the tribe uh, for their effort on this. Um, before this became public, they had reached out to the three cities. Uh, we had a, a meeting with the city managers at the tribal administration building where they really, uh, you know, gave us the background on what was going to be happening here. And so, again, uh, this is voluntary for them. So uh, there's nothing that would compel them to do this just out of being a... Uh, our government-to-government -government relationship, which is great between the cities and the tribe, they're voluntarily coming to us and saying, we recognize you get a portion of the state sales tax. So when we replace it with our tribal sales tax, we still want to make sure that you get the sales tax money that you would have gotten otherwise. And so what these agreements do is exactly that. Uh, it is a proposed agreement between the city and the tribe for when the tribe uh, starts to replace the state sales tax with their own sales tax on these food and beverage sales. Uh, the tribe is going to uh, be giving us our portion of the sales tax for the purpose of uh, funding our public safety. Now, uh, this is uh, somewhat 
uh, similar to uh, the um, agreement that we have with the tribe, with the casino, and the in lieu public safety fee that they charge on the hotel room nights at the casino. And so this isn't the first time uh, that they've entered into a government-to-government agreement with us. And again, I think it just speaks to the nature of the relationship. Uh, It's a great partnership that we have formed with the tribe. And so this uh, agreement, in my eyes, is just a continuing continuance of that great relationship that we have with them. And really, it was them saying, hey, uh, cities, uh, we want to make sure you still get um, your funding and use it for public safety. You know, there's uh, many other things the the tribe does in our community um, and uh, specifically for our public safety. So I really appreciate their commitment to the public safety in Rancho Mirage and for uh, voluntarily bringing these agreements uh, forward for our consideration. So with that, I'll uh, conclude my staff report and uh, we'll go ahead and open up public comment on this item. So if any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would use raise hand on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy? Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Seeing no one and no one on Zoom. Okay, with that, we'll go to council comments. Do we have any council comments on this item? Uh, Yes, Mayor. Yes, Ted. Uh, As the city manager uh, emphasized, uh, this tax primarily is to offset the cost of public safety. Uh, The casino being located uh, in Rancho Mirage, As a result, we provide uh, through our uh, sheriff and Cal Fire services to the casino. So it it has been an excellent relationship, uh, which we look forward to continuing. I also want to congratulate um, uh, Reed Milanovich, who is presently chairman of the Agua Caliente tribe. It was announced today Uh, that Congressman Ruiz uh, has echoed a a bill to name the post office in Palm Springs after his father, Richard Milanovic. And I think it's a great tribute uh, to uh, Chairman Milanovic, both father and son. I, I said to the present chairman, today that he is continuing the legacy of his father, and indeed he is. So we have a great relationship with the tribe, and uh, we look forward to a continuing for many years. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. You're so correct in our relationship with the tribe. Over the years, it's gotten stronger, and both parties have benefited from this agreement and will benefit in the future with more agreement. So uh, we've really uh, look forward to working with them and their leadership is right alongside of us. So uh, thank you very much. Any other uh, comments? I just wanted to uh, echo uh, the city manager's comments uh, about uh, uh, our relationship with the tribe uh, and uh, thank them for stepping up to make sure that uh, we have appropriate funding for public uh, services and, and public safety. Uh, so I do have a question, though. So how um, how is this tax collected? Is this uh, is this directly remitted to us by the tribe, or does it work through the board of equalization? How does it happen? Yeah. So um, w- what will happen is uh, the impacted en- entities or restaurants or bars, whatever they are, uh, whoever is on reservation land that is selling food and beverage, uh, they're going to get notified, and so there will be a date when they start sending those receipts to the tribe instead of the state. And then what the tribe will do is, uh, much like the state does, they'll collect it, and then they would disperse out uh, the shares to all the entities. The tribe will, in essence, act as that body. Uh, So they'll collect it, they'll send it, and then they'll report to us and uh, send the city its portion. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments, please? Okay, can I have a motion? I'll be happy to make that motion, Mayor, that the City Council approve the tribal sales tax agreements 
and authorize the city manager or designee to execute the agreements and subsequent related agreements, extensions, or amendments subject to approval of the city attorney. Second. There's a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0 with council member Marker recused. Okay, thank you. That was the last item on the agenda. I want to wait uh, Let's go to until it. council member Marker returns. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, that was the last of the agenda items. We're now moving into closed session. And I'll turn it over to Steve Quintanilla, our city attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city council now is going to recess into closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 regarding the following existing litigation matters. Vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage et al. versus city of Rancho Mirage. Vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage versus city of Rancho Mirage. Wendy Hope Heckman versus city of Rancho Mirage. And we have a case on here that is, we have the case name unspecified since disclosure would jeopardize pending settlement negotiations. And finally, the council will meet in closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4 regarding one potential initiation of litigation item. And those are the items we're gonna be discussing in closed session. Thank you, Steve. And we'll now move into closed session. Okay, we're ready to reopen. We're going to reconvene, open session. So this, I will reopen the meeting and turn it over to Steve Quintanilla, the city attorney. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the city council took no reportable action in closed session today. We're gonna to adjourn the meeting. <laughs>